Let's bring in Ethan Harris, head of global economics at Bank of America, Global Research. Yelena Sholyetyeva is a U.S. economist at BNP Paribas. Uh, Thank you both for being here. Steve just laid out the groundwork and the context for what we we saw in the inflation data this morning. Uh, Yelena, perhaps we'll start with you. Was there anything about it that makes you feel as though the inflation picture is more or less of a threat to the U.S. economy in the coming months? I think inflation remains a big threat. And uh, a little bit of a cooling is just simply not enough for the Fed to uh, stop tightening. I mean, look at uh, at the report. Uh, Look at the income data today. We still have tremendous strength in terms of labor income. So uh, look at wages. They're still growing. So as long as wages are growing, the economy will be okay and inflation will be really slow to to cool down. I think, um, you know, the latest developments in terms of uh, the banking sector uh, also didn't really alter much uh, what consumers are doing. Look at uh, today's data uh, and at the Michigan survey of consumer sentiment. There was not much of an impact there at all. So I think the Fed is clearly on a, on a path to, uh, to hike in uh, May, and then they will see how much uh, lending uh, conditions tighten or further uh, for them to decide what to do next. Uh, our call is for a pause after that, but we do expect them to hike in May. Ethan, we, we've been talking, going all the way back 10, 13 years now at various points. We've seen different kinds of scenarios play out for the U.S. economy during that time span. But one thing that we have seen during that span is a near zero interest rate policy for the better part of a decade plus. I've heard it referred to as a tough line to straddle, the Fed, in trying to kind of keep the economy going and contain the banking crisis and everything else. Is the Fed's job impossible or is it just extremely difficult? It's difficult, but it's certainly not impossible. I think there's a tendency to exaggerate the the idea that the Fed's got its hands tied behind its back and is wearing blindfolds here. They can't deal with both a financial crisis and an inflation problem. But we know that the Fed has the right tools to deal with this kind of financial crisis. I mean, central banks were invented to deal with liquidity problems in the banking system. And they've got the right tools. They've, uh, they've brought them out all guns blazing. A very aggressive attempt to stabilize uh, the, the challenges in the banking sector. And uh, the preliminary data suggests it's working. Um, we just got yesterday afternoon, we got data on borrowing from the Fed and bank borrowing from the Fed dropped a little bit, which is a very good sign when you think you're in the middle of a, a stress event. Um, and then the other thing I, I, I should point out is that even if the Fed doesn't succeed in controlling uh, the panic in markets, um, they can cut interest rates. They don't have to just use targeted tools. Um, they can walk and chew gum. They can focus on the financial st- stress in the short run, cut interest rates, and then go back to hiking interest rates and dealing with the inflation problem. Because the financial issues happen very quickly. Inflation fighting is a long-term process. So there's no, there's no inconsistency in the Fed uh, addressing the financial problem first and the inflation problem later. And they've done it multiple times in history. Uh, Ethan, this this is a good point. I want to stick with that just for a second here, because, you know, the banking stress issue was not something that was really on the radar until the last month or so. It was something the Fed could just focus solely on inflation. Now it's got to worry about financial stability. Earlier this morning, Senator Elizabeth Warren, who's obviously been an outspoken person with regard to, to, to critiquing banks, joined Squawk on the street and talked a little bit about how she views bank regulations going forward.